Resilience is a jinx breaker, a game changer. It entails the spiritual, mental, and physical audacity, tenacity, and dexterity to break out from the regular circles that have defined and patterned a life. It involves a resolution to employ and deploy all resources, both physical and metaphysical, to effect a change from the ordinary to the extraordinary, from the natural to the supernatural. Of course, this is not an easy task, as you have to do the extraordinary to see the extraordinary. And that's what resilience is all about, pushing against the tides of the normal to gain entrance into the supernormal. Well, they say when the desirable is not available, then av the available becomes desirable. But that's not just for all of us. Because I say the desirable is always available, maybe not just within reach or not just in your comfort or regular zone. There's nothing new under the sun, you know. Enough talk already. You're welcome to the Youth Arena show. My name is Sanctified Akko. Today on the show, we'll be discussing the topic resilience. Resilience. And our guest for the day is Gospel Achimogo. He's a graduate of Kogi State University with a BSc in physics, where he was NIFES president. He is currently serving as a pastor and church administrator at Portals Christian Center, Abuja. He's a graphics designer and a songwriter. Wow, that shows enough resilience already. Thank you so much for coming to be a blessing to us on the show today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your childhood and background? Okay, I came from a very humble background. Uh, at, at one point, when I was in the primary school, my, I lost my dad. Okay, mm. and then you know, I was left with only my mom. And then at that point, I have two elder brothers before me, and life was not very easy mm. and it was not funny mm. to see school fees, to go to school and then no uncle, nobody that would give a succor. Mm. Uh, we thank God because of his faithfulness today mm. and all of that became history mm. because we decided not to stay and give excuse for mm. life. Mm. And we take God by his word. Mm. And we followed him all the way. Mm. And he brought us to where we are today. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. So what you're saying now is that a resilient person is someone who takes God by his word and mm. makes sure that the word of God for his life comes to pass yes. regardless. Exactly. You know, the totality of who you are, all the skills that you have and all that you do, songwriter, pastor, and uh, BSc in physics, it already shows so much resilience about you, you know. And uh, coming from the family as the first graduate of the family and uh, all that you've gone through, do you in any way feel that what you went through was God's plan for you? Okay, the truth is, so I went, went through my Bible, I discovered that uh, God has a way of doing things. When he was leading the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan, he led them through a path that was not easy at all. Mm. And it was part of God's plan. So all things worked together to them. That I, I love God. I love God. Not so God according to his the truth is, whatever I, I see today and whatever I passed through in those days, mm. I knew it was a plan of God to build me mm. and to bring me to a point where I will not be depending on any mortal man or human agent or human means mm. to get to where I'm supposed to be. Mm. So I believe it is part of God's plan mm. for all, your life. For my life. Wow, that's so beautiful. Now, how do you see challenges? How do you face obstacles? You could either see a, an obstacle as an hindrance to your next level, or you can consider it a stepping stone. 
Achimogu here is telling us his story of how he considered every obstacle that he's gone through in life as a stepping stone to greatness. God building him through all those difficult parts to becoming who God intended for him. And that's the perspective through which we should look at life and look at all the challenges that come at us. All right. Now, looking back at all the highs and the lows and all that you've been through, do you think that it was worth it? It, it was God's plan according to how we just said it. Yes. And I know that whatever God does is perfect. Mm. So it was worth it. Mm. And I love what he's doing in my life right mm. now. And those experiences are part of my story. Mm. Yes. Wow, that's so beautiful. Whatever God does is perfect. I think we have, to, we have to begin to learn to look at life through the lens at which you see it. It's so powerful. Whatever God does is perfect. Doesn't matter what it is, but it's perfect. And it's going to have a perfect end. Okay, now, I believe that the essence of life is in finding purpose, you know. Do you feel that everything that you've gone through, in one way or the other, shaped you and helped you discover who you are in God? Yes, that okay. is the truth. I know that without those experiences, I will not have discovered purpose. Hmm. Probably, maybe I would have discovered purpose, but the you things... You have been able to fulfill it the way you should have. Yes, the things I passed through actually shaped me. They changed my understanding about life. Maybe I would have attended another different school entirely mm. from the one I attended, the people I met, mm. and then would have been different kinds of people. Yes. So I will not take it as a disadvantage, yes. but I knew and I know right now that it is part of God's plan and it is the purpose of God for, your life. for my life. So I've discovered a lot of things mm. on this part, mm. the people I met especially. Mm. Yes. Wow, that's so powerful. You know, the lens through which we look at life now becomes a tool, either, either, either a building tool or a destructive tool. And the moment you're able to picture every challenge that you go through, as God's opportunity, God, God's way of giving you an opportunity to learn and unlearn, then uh, you're already a success, you know. So uh, what do you think is the purpose for all that you've gone through, really? If you, if, you would, if you would just, in few words, what do you think is the purpose for all that you have gone through? In few words. Or however, however okay. you want to say it. <laughs> uh, the, the purpose is... I, the way I see it is God has, uh, he has planned it that he will build the man he wants to use mm. through this means. Mm. So that's how I view it. Okay. So there was one certain time I was asking God about my life, mm. and then the way the things are, mm. he said that those things are, he wants to build me. So, and I know that in building, it, it must not always be smooth. Yeah. There are rough parts, there are quarry sites yes. where they used to chisel or chisel, something. Yeah. So, in my own life, I see it as a building process mm. for what God wants me to do. So, mm. I can understand and feel the way some people feel right now and the mm. way the people are what they are passing through mm. in life yeah, because, because you've gone through I've it. experienced it mm. before so it was not difficult for Moses to go back to Egypt because he knew what was happening he came out of Egypt mm. to bring them out of Egypt yeah. again. Mm. wow that's this is just so touching so beautiful you know I I must say I admire the way you look at things it's just uh, it's beautiful. I could almost say perfect, you know, building process. You know, someone else would have looked at all the challenges that they have been through and say, God does not like me, you know. And then that just, that just spoils the whole work. But when you look at it as a building process, then you know there's a, vis there's a vision. There's somewhere you're headed for. And, you know, it just changes the perspective for life and makes you, uh, what's the word now, makes you optimistic for the future. 
So what you're even saying now is that uh, challenges make you optimistic for the future, knowing that they are preparing you for a greater glory. That's beautiful. Of course, graduating from school as the first graduate is already a major milestone, you know. But uh, I know that you are not at that point of satisfaction yet. And uh, you are not exactly at that point where God is bringing you. Um, from where you are now, from where God has picked you from, and from where you are, do you see light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, the okay. part of the just is like a shining light that mm -hmm. shines brighter and brighter into the perfect day. So I know that where God is taking me to, uh, the Bible says, faithful is he that promised, and he shall do it. So I believe that Christ in me is the hope of glory. So I'm not somebody that does not have hope for the future because he has shown one, he has shown himself faithful in my life and then he will still show himself faithful in my life. There was one time I heard the word, a, a scripture came to me as one of my disciples I was speaking in the book of Isaiah 53 verse 12 said I would divide a portion for him with the mm. great. Mm. So I know that my portion is it's with the great. great. Mm. So wow. Wow, that's so beautiful. Wow. Now what are the key lessons that you have learned from all that you've been through in life? What would you say to youths who are struggling right now, who are probably passing through what you've been through? Or worse, situ or worse situations than what you've been through. What would you say to them? What are the key lessons that life has taught you? Okay, my one, you know your real source, mm. who is God, and then which is God, and then you should not give up. You should not have excuse for not doing anything mm. that anybody else is doing in life. Mm. You may not be like everybody that you have your own part of destiny mm. and let nothing stop you from fulfilling that purpose for your life. Mm. So I've seen that God loves any man from anywhere. If you align with him and surrender to his will, mm. he's going to take you to the heights that he has prepared for you. Mm. So I've learned that you should stay glued to your real source mm. and then you should not give excuse for not becoming whoever God has designed you to become. Hmm. Wow, this is so beautiful. So no time for excuse, no space for excuses. Yes. Okay, so now the, you know, through the journey of life, no matter how tough life is, there is, there, there must be someone, there must be someone. God always has that person who who backs you up, who is your backbone, who is your support system, or probably God himself. Who is that person that you would say is my backbone? If not for this person, I wouldn't have, you know, come this far. Okay. I have a lot of people that make contribution to my life, but I, I have only one person who is the backbone. Mm. And that is God. Mm. So I can't point to anybody and say, mm. if the person is not there, I will not be here today. Mm. So the truth is, many people contributed, my mother, my brothers, my spiritual uh, father, mm. my mentors and disciples, friends, yes. colleagues. So I know that many people contributed, oh, but backbone. God is the one, the, the chief cornerstone, according to the scripture, is mm. Christ, the rock. Yeah. So he's the, the backbone, the one we are leaning on. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's so beautiful. Mm. So through life's journey, could you just tell us some key roles that Christ has played in your life and how he has stood up for you in times when it looked as if this was the end? Okay. Ah. Uh. He has played the role of a of a of a father, mm. of a father, because maybe because I not have uh, the, the biological father experience like that, 
So I have experienced the love of God, the love of Christ as a father, as a friend, as a comforter, as the one that gives me comfort in life. So there is nothing, I've suffered a lot of things in life. And there was one point where my house got burnt, all those mm -hmm. things. I lost everything, even with my, my surgery case inside mm -hmm. and all those things. The, I still had something within me, uh, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Mm. So I was just smiling because mm. I knew where it was coming from. Mm. So it cannot be lost. Mm. So Christ has been my support, my anchor, my father, my friend. Mm. Wow. You speak of Christ so beautifully. So. I want you to tell us some of the challenges, like some specific challenges that you went through in school and how you balance the fact that you were the knifest president with your academics and how you, with the, all the challenges you were facing. How did you balance it, you know, and come out successful with physics, BS yeah. in physics? It's not a joke. <laughs> all right. The truth is, coming from that background, there were times that uh, we're not having money, we're not having the kind of clothes that I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And being a leader, people expect so much from you. Yeah. And then coupled with uh, the department and the way things were, there were times we missed tests, there were times we missed uh, lectures mo many times mm -hmm. because of the assignment mm -hmm. that there were, the truth is, we trust dead God and then we're doing our part anytime we have the opportunity. Mm. So we prayed and then we studied at night. Mm. Prayed and we studied at night. And then most times, sleep will not be enough for us because of the stress of the work coupled with academic works and then. God was my provider on campus. <laughs> so there was nothing like uh, uh, somebody having, uh, what is it called, an e impress from uh, parents sending you money monthly, yeah. all those things. We're, we're living for God. My school was not too far from my home, so most time I can go home, okay. look for food, come back to school, mm -hmm. then continue life. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, you just said something now. You say you pray, mm. then we'll study at night. Yes. So there must be a balance between yes. prayer and study. Yeah. You cannot just keep praying and expect God to, to do the study for you or help you pass. And then you don't study and, for, and forget mm. God. So there mm. must be that balance. You must do the both of them. Wow, that's so beautiful. Now, you, you, you have talked about Jesus so beautifully. Do you feel that peradventure, there must, maybe there might have been a way that uh, you would have made it without him? No. Okay. It's not possible. Hmm. But in life, uh, that is me. Hmm. In life, people achieve great things without even knowing the Lord. Hmm. So there are atheists that are doing well. Hmm. But to me, I don't see it as if as something that is possible. Hmm. The question is, what's the definition of successful? What's the definition of doing well? Yeah. Mm. So that is the definition of success to an ordinary mm. person. But to me, success is all about fulfilling the purpose, purpose of God so for your life. So people can amount to something in life that people will give them a blood for, even without having Christ. Mm. But to me, fulfillment is all about doing the will of God mm. and accomplish His will on the earth. I must do the will of Him that sent me. Mm. Right, is there and fulfill it. Mm. So we are successful to the extent that we accomplish the will of God. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Mm. We are successful to the extent that mm. we accomplish mm. the will of God for our lives. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the Bible says, well, "What shall it profit a man if he gets the whole world and loses his own soul?" You know, it's, it's just vanity upon vanity. Now, what would you say to those who don't, who don't have Christ in their lives? Okay. 
So anybody that does not have Christ in his life, the Bible says this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and that life is in his son, Jesus Christ. And say, he that had the son had life. He that does not have the son of God does not have life in himself. Mm -hmm. So my advice to anybody that does not have Christ is, whether you are alive or you are living, mm -hmm. and you don't have Christ, you don't have life. Mm -hmm. Because the life is, the Bible says that in the beginning was, was the word. Life. What was it God? The word was God. Mm -hmm. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. So uh, the truth is every anybody who has not seen Christ, who does not have Christ, is still in darkness. Mm -hmm. And you can have Jesus today. Mm -hmm. And have Jesus today. Mm -hmm. Even right now. Mm -hmm. Because wow. your life will be empty and void mm. without him. Because there is eternity in the heart of man mm. seeking to be filled. filled. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's so beautiful. The people who have listened to you and they want to say yes to Jesus, please could you just lead them in, in saying the salvation prayer? Okay. So if you have listened to me and you want to give your life to Christ, mm. I want you to pray this prayer with me. You say, Lord Jesus, Forgive me my sin. I surrender to you. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you were raised to life on the third day for my own salvation and my lifting. Today I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior from now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gospel Achigo, for coming to be a blessing to us. Any final words of encouragement to everybody who, is, who has listened and to the people who just gave their life to Christ? Okay, for everyone who just watched this section, I, my charge to you is that you should always look unto God hmm. as your help, as your source, hmm. as your sustainer, and then for the people who just gave their hearts to the Lord. I want you to know that you just made a decision that will determine where you will spend the rest of your life. Mm. So find a Bible-believing church. You learn of Christ. Say, put my yoke upon you mm. and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. So mm. God expects you to learn the ways of God. And one of the ways to learn the ways of God is to Find a Bible believing church mm. and then attach yourself to that family. And I know that your life will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Thank you so much, Pastor Gospel Achimogo. Thank you so much for coming to be a blessing to us today. We are grateful that you could come and then we hope to have you some other time. Thank you. Wow, what can we say if it hadn't been the Lord who had been on our side? The tides and the storms of life would have swallowed us up. Thank God for God. Thank God for Jesus Christ. All right, we'll take a very quick break. And when we return, we'll be on to our Artist of the Week segment. Stay tuned. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Did you know ACNN reaches out to all African, European and Asian countries? Did you know ACNN produces programs that provide Bible-based solutions to your everyday need? Would you consider partnering with us in order to help us reach out to more souls? Then, become a part of ACNN TV Kingdom Investment Partnership. You can be a monthly or a yearly partner. To subscribe, make your partnership payment into this Zenith Bank account. For more details and confirmation of your Akip subscription, please call plus 234-703-2656. Five, four, four. You can also reach us via email.
together we can reach the world with the undiluted Word of God. Welcome back. And in case you're just joining us, this is the Youth Arena Show. And we are on to the Artist of the Week segment. Our artist for the week is Gina Pat, a beautiful gospel singer. Thank you so much for coming to be here. Thank you for having me here yeah, in the studio. Thank you. Yeah. So, can we meet you? Okay, my name is Gina Pat. I'm a gospel evangelist. I'm a mother of three lovely kids. I'm a widow. Oh. Yeah, I'm from uh, Benway State. And then um, I'm born again. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. I, I am passionate about the things of God. Mm -hmm. And that was why I actually chose that line of gospel. Mm -hmm. I started as a um, circular. Wow. But when I gave my life to Christ, I just felt God gave you the voice. So why not use the voice to glorify his name? And yeah. then I, you know, I switched. And ever since I said that, that journey, it's been wonderful with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and wow. here we are. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So what was it like growing up for you? Wow, growing up was not easy. I'm from a polygamous home. My mm -hmm. father was a policeman and then uh, my mother left me when I was barely three months old. So mm -hmm. you can imagine growing up as a three month old baby in the hands of whoever you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then I grew up knowing that my father had other wives. Oh. Yes. Other wives that felt, okay, my children should be better than this yeah, one. And yeah. then uh -huh, it, they didn't take it easy on me at all. Mm. But I was more like the favored child in the family. Not mm. because my, fav my father favored me more than them, but because I think God's hand was just upon me. Mm. Because I was faced with a lot of favors from outside. Mm. Uh -huh. But at home, there was nothing like love. Mm. The only person I would have got, gotten the love from was my dad, who was never around because mm. of his... The, the, is the nature of his job, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to like, I got more of the love outside, but not in the right way, mm -hmm. you understand? Because I always end up with the wrong Hand. associations and mm -hmm. everything. But it wasn't easy growing up in a polygamous home. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell us, what was the most difficult part of growing up? <laughs> Having to carry at the age of uh, eight years, carrying a very big bath on my head mm. to climb the stair of three-story building mm. to fetch water during the rainy season. Mm. And I was very scared of earthworms. Mm. And then I will go and as I'm carrying the water, I see earthworms and I will scream, nobody to help me, I'll fall down, oh. pour away the water. And I cannot go back home because I know the beats get beaten. Oh my God. Hmm. In fact, there's a side of my skull that is not properly complete because oh. of jamming my head to the wall, oh you know, by stepmothers and everything. And I thank God today I'm here because I never knew I was going to be alive to see it today hmm. because of the maltreatment I got from home. Oh. Home was not a beautiful place for me. Hmm. Home was not a lovely place for me. Hmm. No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. That means that it would reflect on how you're treating your children now because you want them to have the best. I made up my mind. One thing I told God was the love I never got from my mother I was going to pour it all into the life of my children. Hmm. So ending up being a widow again, mm. you oh. know, having just them as the only, only source of joy, you know, I have. So I, my life achievement, everything I own in life, apart from owing it to God, is to my children. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. No matter how difficult life is, there's always the beautiful part. There's yes. always the bright part. Yes. So were there precious moments from your childhood? I never had one, like I said before. I think the only thing that gave me a little joy was the fact that I loved music. Oh. I could be walking on the street and hear music and start dancing. Oh. And the only time I think as a child I really got a little joy was in the boarding school. Mm. I remember my first day when I won the, the most beautiful girl in <laughs> in the school <laughs> and then in the midst of senior students yeah. I was the only junior student wow. and, and I won and then I became a queen in the school and I was yeah. treated like royalty like and yeah. everything I think that part was like I said I was always happy when I was out of the house oh. 
But once coming home was like tragedy for me because oh. I knew what was waiting for me. Oh. Uh -huh. And then in the school there, due to my music, uh, the pas my passion for music, I joined a, a music uh, band, mm -hmm. uh, Rose of Sharon Band, and then we will be going from places to places. I was the You're smallest mm -hmm. among them, dancing, the vocalist mm -hmm. singing, I was the dancer. That only gave me joy. Mm, yeah. Music. Apart from that, nothing else. No. So at what point would you say music really began for you? It has always been my thing, like I said. Okay. <laughs> it has always been my thing. It's just that I remember when Nikon Noga was, uh, I mean, uh, is it? It's Transcom, they call it now. Nikon Hilton. Then it was Hilton, then Nikon yeah. Noga Hilton. Yes. As a young girl, immediately I finished secondary school, I somehow I got linked up and then I became a dancer there. Mm. Yeah, I became a dancer in the Capitol Bar. Wow. And from there, I was linked up to another person and I became a, I left there for Sheraton mm. and I became a singer in Elephant Bar wow. as young as I was then. Wow. And How then old? I was like, all this I was doing between 12, 13, 14. Yes. Really? Yes. I would run away from school just to go and sing. Wow. You know. And I was doing this and one day there was this man, he comes every day to the elephant bar, he sits to take his drink and then he'll be watching me sing and I never knew. Mm. And then one day he called me, little girl, come here, where are your parents? I said, they are in Jaws. He said, then what are you doing here? I said, I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm singing, why are you not in school? I'm, I'm in school, I just come to sing and go back. Mm. And then he said, would you want me to help you? Mm. I said, I don't know you, sir. Maybe you want to use me for ritualist, I don't know. Mm. You know. Then I didn't even give my life to Christ. I didn't know what mm. it meant by you know, just one small Catholic girl. Yeah. You know. So I somehow he, w he was able to convince me. And then I said, Okay, if you really want to help me, you get in touch with my father. Mm. You know, I'm the first daughter of my father. Okay. And then somehow he got in touch with my father and my father was like, never. Ever. <laughs> my first daughter to do music. Then they saw it as indecent and wayward. Oh. And then he was like, no, I'd rather prefer her getting married. Because mm. I got married quite young. I'd rather prefer her getting married. And then that was how I was forced into marriage. Yeah. After my second school, I was like married. So I just started life as a young girl in a, in a marriage. In, I mean, in a marriage, yeah. virtually sold me off to the man. Oh, that then, same man? No, another is friend. Oh, mm. but at least you have children from... Yeah. yeah, I have two boys and a girl. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So what are your hopes, just in, in one minute, what are your hopes and aspirations for the future? And, uh, do you have something you're currently working on? Yes, apart from me trying to couple up my album, mm. I am working on a program I want to start maybe towards the middle of this year, mm. uh, Believers Gathering with Gina Pat. Oh. Yes, where we're bringing like gospel singers together, believers together from mm. different denominations. We just come worship God together wow. and then maybe bring one or two men of God to come preach the word, encourage mm. us and then continue the work of God. I just want to live the rest of my life doing the work of doing God. Doing the work of God. Yes. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you. So you have this very beautiful single. And yes. uh, so beautiful. You. Could you just do something for us okay. around it? Okay. Now you I know. Now you they make my life complete. I thank you, Lord. I de thank you, Lord. You stood by me when the world gave up on me, Jesus. Now you I know, I de thank you, Lord. Baba, oh, now you de make my life complete. I got by you the way, only you deserve all praise. Baba, oh, now you de make my life complete, oh. Hallelujah. Now you I know. I thank you, Lord. Wow, so much passion. <laughs>
so much passion in your expression you. and your voice. Thank so beautiful. You. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so, I'm so, so happy much. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so are you open for ministrations? How could other people assess your song? Yeah, why not? Like, um, my Facebook page is Gina Pat Music. Okay. Instagram, Gina Pat Music. Twitter, Gina Pat Music. And my YouTube, Gina Pat Music. Wow. Yes. Wow. So... We can just get your songs from there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My video is out. Yes, you can get it from there. Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you so <laughs> much. We'd like so to have much. you again I'll and again. I'll be very willing to be yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we have come to the end of this week's episode, and I trust that you've had a nice time with us. And so we'll do this again, same time, same station next week. And remember, make an impact this week. Put a smile on someone's face and watch your soul overflow with happiness. Many blessings, much love. Bye.